I bought this terrible Range Rover for just £1,500 from Copart and she came to me with quite a lot of damage. As far as I can tell, it was a tree that caused all of this damage. The windscreen was completely trashed, as was the bonnet, the passenger front wing, and then this whole section at the bottom. And not only that, but the dashboard was all smashed up and there was glass absolutely everywhere. The first thing I did was to vacuum up all of the glass before I had a bad accident and then I set to pulling apart the dashboard which had about 10,000 pieces to it and I had to do this because I ended up replacing the whole dash frame. After I did this I put my feet up and called in the professionals to fit a new windscreen. Luckily I managed to get a hold of a second hand bonnet in body colour which I managed to fit with very little fanfare. <laughs> and I also managed to grab a second-hand front wing, again, also in body colour. I then took this old girl to be inspected. She failed at first, but after a bit more elbow grease, she did end up passing with semi-flying colours. Happy days. So will my luck with this Range Rover continue, or will it live up to its reputation of being one of the most unreliable cars on the road? So she's road legal, but she's not quite ready just yet to become a daily driver. There's still quite a bit of work we need to do to get this looking really nice. And the first place that I want to start is actually with the engine. You see, this car hasn't come with any service history whatsoever. So I don't know when the last time this engine was serviced. Now, as a reminder, this is the 3.6 litre turbo diesel V8 engine. And I think this has done around about 116,000 miles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the oil, I'm gonna change the air filter, the cabin filter, and I'm gonna get in here as well and uh, change this diesel filter down there. And I'm hoping there are no kind of horrible surprises. When the engine is running, it sounds very smooth i've obviously driven this car now the engine performs absolutely lovely there's no weird ticks rattles clunks or bangs or anything like that and crucially for one of these cars <laughs> or crucially for any car who, who, who am i kidding there are no engine management lights on so that is that's just that's fantastic <laughs> And you know what, this is the first SUV that I've ever owned or ever worked on. And to be honest with you, I can't believe that I've never thought about getting one before because look how high everything is. Everything is just within reach. Whereas, you know, with a car, you're kind of, you know, bent over like this, trying to, you know, get everything down there. This is lovely. This is, <laughs> this is just here. And obviously I work outside and without a lift, that's amazing. Where do I start? I suppose that must come off. And one thing I want to check, which I know is a, a really common issue on these, is that these intercooler pipes are really prone to splitting and they can cause all sorts of, all sorts of problems. All right, this one looks absolutely A-OK. -okay. And this one also looks fine. So that's good news. Right, and so I have had the engine running just to give it a little bit of warmth for the oil change. And what I've got here are a set of ramps that my granddad has gifted me. So they could be from the 1920s, the 1960s. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not, you know, they seem relatively sturdy. <laughs> so to actually test out how sturdy they really are, my ingenious plan is to drive an incredibly heavy Range Rover onto them and then lay underneath. I tell you what though, these things are 100% homemade. I can tell you that right now. And the reason that I'm using these ramps is because I don't actually own a jack that can lift this car up <laughs> high enough for me to, you know, safely get in and out underneath of it. Something I just didn't think about whatsoever. Okay, so this is either going to go really well or it's going to go really badly. It's literally, it's a 50-50 at this point. Am I on? Am I on enough? Oh! Could I just go to there, do you reckon? Hello, future Nino here. I'm just editing this video and I'm watching the footage back and it has just occurred to me that driving halfway up the ramps like that could indeed have made the ramps kind of ping out from underneath the car. And if I was laying under the car when it did that, it would have rendered this face completely unsalvageable. No spares and repairs whatsoever. Now, hindsight is a wonderful thing 
you know, I did it. They didn't fall out. I'm here to, t- to tell the tale. Learn from my mistakes. Don't do that ever. Okay, great. Thank you. Back to the video. Now I'm making some assumptions here. The assumptions I'm making are that this is a Range Rover and I know they're good off-road and so they should be able to hold themselves <laughs> on an incline a lot steeper than that. So she's in park, she's got the handbrake on and I've also got some pretty meaty chocks behind both wheels. I mean, I'm not known for my health and safety, but should be fine. Right, I want to just show you something really quickly. I want to show you an absolutely genius piece of engineering. So these Range Rovers don't just have one drain plug. So you can see, so you can see the drain plug right there. That's on the front, but these Range Rovers actually have Two. The other drain plug is right in there, right on top of this whole cross membery bit. So, <laughs> how am I going to drain the oil out of this back one without it just spilling over the top of all of this? Because there's just, look, there's no way you can just catch it. It's the drain plug, the drain plug is right where my finger is above that bit of metal. That's that's really, really well thought out. You know, and really this one's not that much better to be honest because the oil is just gonna spurt straight that way and then, you know, onto this, onto this part there of the subframe. So, well done, well done Land Rover. So this drain plug, I mean, is on the surface very rusty. I don't know if that gives any kind of indication <laughs> as to how long it's been since, since this oil was drained. Go on, get on, <laughs> yep. <gasps> oh no, oh no. Oh, I just rounded it completely on the very first try. Oh. Oh, oh I've only just started and I've already done something bad. All right, let's try hammering it on. with the little ratchet. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Woo. Oh, that was close. <laughs> okay, so here's my plan. You can see the socket on there still. Now, I have managed to find this old pipe that is off an Audi. And so <laughs> my plan is, this is like perfectly shaped. My plan is to put that over the plug like that. Well, I've put a screw in there, and so the oil should come down there into that pipe, and then out the end there, and then into my oil, oil catch tank. I mean, if you've got a better idea, <laughs> let me know, but I can assure you, by the time you do, it's gonna be too late. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this quickly as well. There will be a little bit of spillage for sure. Here we go. <laughs> go. Yes. Oh, it's all over my hand. Absolutely everywhere. Uh-oh. This isn't good at all in the slightest. I've screwed up. Oh no, now it's not draining. It's not draining. Oh yes it is, I took that one out. It's going right down my arm in my jumper and then I just stuck my finger in it. Well done. Okay. Oh, I hate doing oil changes at home. <laughs> this is, I need a better way of doing this. Okay, and for my second genius solution, <laughs> I've just kind of cut, cut a plastic bottle like that. And my plan is to kind of scoot that up there like that. <laughs> and then just hope that that catches enough, which of course it won't. Uh, and then have it come out of this nozzle. Okay, kinda, 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 but kinda not all at the same time. Oh, to be fair, I think there was only a little bit of oil in there. Oh gosh, that's just ridiculous. 
And so after I'd spent hours mopping up all of the spilled oil and installing two new drain pipes back into the summer, I was finally able to crack on installing the new oil filter. I accompanied that with nine and a half liters of, what is that, 5W30 oil, <laughs> I think. And I'll just say right now that nine and a half liters of any oil is not cheap. And I've got to say, you're not going to be able to hear this, but that is ever so slightly smoother. And it was smooth to begin with, but it's just a little bit quieter, just a little bit smoother. And with that complete, it was time to move on to the air filter. Just a couple of little screws and jibber jabbers and this thing just pops off. And I'll be honest with you, the air filter wasn't actually too bad. So I am starting to wonder if this car had been serviced fairly recently. With the air filter housing lid removed, it was now easy for me to actually access the diesel filter. And it shouldn't be that difficult to remove a diesel filter. <laughs> but of course, this is me. Diesel. <laughs> Diesel. Diesel. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. No, oh, Nino, you complete moron. See this plug on the bottom and it snagged. So after dealing with the cleanup operation on aisle V8, I swapped out the fuel filter with a like-for-like -like item, making sure to write the date on it. This is just gonna help anybody in the future. I then reinstalled the fuel filter with way less fanfare than how it came out. Then it was just a case of replacing the air filter, replacing the cabin filter, and job was a good one. Serviced. Now I am slightly worried that this uh, fuel filter is still gonna need some priming. I think you just turn the engine on basically <laughs> i think you turn the ignition on let let it prime and it should i think just sort itself out rather than having to kind of manually bleed it at least that is what i am very very much hoping what have i done with the key right there is only really one way to find out so let it do its thing Oh, there we go, cut out, <laughs> because there's no diesel. Oh no, am I gonna have to bleed this? Is there a way of bleeding it? There must be. <sighs> Come on. <laughs> okay, so I've just had a check and it does look like there is a process. <laughs> yes, I should have checked first. But I didn't. I'm too gung-ho sometimes for my own good. Apparently you turn the ignition on, wait for 30 seconds, turn it off, wait, turn it back on, wait another 30 seconds and you do that a few times and then hopefully the, uh, the, the fuel system should, should bleed itself. So I'm just going to do this a few times now and then, and then we'll try again. Okay, I just tried to start it a couple more times and it started. <laughs> so we're on, everything, everything is jolly. Happy days. Car is serviced. Now, I probably will do the brake fluid, um, but not right now. I think this car has been serviced fairly recently, to be fair. The oil didn't look bad. The air filter didn't look too bad. Cabin filter was a bit rough, but that doesn't matter too much. I'm just gonna cross my fingers right now in the short term and hope that the, the brake fluid was done. But now we can move on. And And what I'm going to move on to is this whole situation. Now, if you come over to the good side, this is what it's supposed to look like. You have these gills that go into this uh, panel here. Then you have a mud guard here that uh, fits, fits these side, sideboard thingamajiggers. The wheel arch liner comes down into there. And so that's what we've got to recreate in here. Now I did have a load of trouble sourcing the bracket that goes in there that holds this panel and all of the mud guard in. I have now managed to get a second hand one. So I'm going to fit that. We're going to take a look at having to paint the panel that I've got as well. Okay, so this is the panel that fits at the bottom of the fins. Kind of goes there like that. Now obviously this is not, <laughs> is not the correct color. 
So I'm going to have to paint this. Now, what I have got, I just bought on eBay. I think it was £21. You can get a little kit here. So you can see this is Range Rover, Buckingham Blue, and then just a can of clear lacquer. Now, I did try to get some, um, you know, decent 2K clear coat in a can, but I just, I didn't have time. So I am going to, I'm going to use this clear lacquer and hope that it just gives a good enough, a good enough uh, finish. You know, it is a fairly cheap solution to have in this, you know, painted, painted professionally. And it might just be good enough, which is all I kind of want at this stage. So it was off to my makeshift paint booth in the shed. And seeing as the outside temperature and actually the temperature inside this shed was about two degrees C, I've just used a heat gun to warm up the paint can and to warm up the surface of the panel just a little bit. Not make it hot, but just make it slightly less cold. I then gave it a nice coat of paint, and then again, just used the heat gun just to help the drying process after it had already been sitting for about 10 minutes, just wasn't drying in the cold. I ended up giving the panel two coats of paint, which gave it a really nice finish. And then after that second coat of paint had dried, I then gave it a couple of coats of clear. Okay, so I'm gonna give that paint a little bit of time to dry. And uh, whilst I do that, I just want to turn my attention to something that I know is just going to be extraordinarily tedious. And that is, you can see up there, that is tape. It's all sticky tape. It goes all the way right over to that bit there. And this was where, um, when this car was at Copart and the windscreen was all caved in, they stuck a big sticky tape sheet thingamajigger right the way over it. And this is what's left. You peel it and then it just comes off in the tiniest little chunks. Nothing actually quite comes off. It's the most irritating thing. Look at this, look. If you just try and grab a bit of it, you can get about that much every time. Oh, so what I've got here is I've bought this plastic scraper. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is probably using a bit of heat gun and then, you know, maybe some acetone and stuff like that is to just really slowly oh, I mean look at this look tell me this isn't the most tedious thing you've ever had to watch and now spare a thought for me because I've got to go over the whole thing and I only managed to get a couple of minutes into this tedium before I noticed yet another issue I have just noticed something horrendous whilst I'm up here doing this and I cannot believe I've only just noticed it. Look at that. Look at the size of that dent. <laughs> look at that, look, it's right on the right on the crease there. Look at it. It's that big. I cannot believe I've only just noticed that. Look. That's really annoying. And I'll tell you why that's really, really annoying. It's obviously because in the last video, we had the windscreen out. Whilst the windscreen was out, I could have had a dent man come and then he could have got up behind the headlining and that, and that could have helped him pull that out if he needed to. Oh, I'm so annoyed. How? It's so obvious. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Look at it. Oh. <laughs> you know, you can't unsee it now. Everywhere you look, it's just like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, well, fair enough. Right, uh, I've only made it this far, but I'm actually pleased to say that it's not too bad actually getting that off once you get once you get the heat gun on there. Just give it just a little tickle of heat with that scraper, and it actually comes off really easy. And that there, that's just that's just residue. And I'm going to carry on getting that off, but I'm absolutely dying to see how this painting that I've done has come out. Okay, let's have a look then. Oh, I am moderately happy with that. Oh, look at that. That is not too shabby whatsoever, especially for a little bit of shed painting. Let's have a look to see if the color actually even kind of matches. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> It's absolutely terrible. Oh no, oh the ups and downs. I think it could do actually just with maybe one or two more coats. Okay, check this out. <laughs> Take a look at that finish. That is now way nicer than it was a moment ago. And if I hold this up 
to the car in the right place it still looks a little bit off but i think that's just because the panels surrounding it the wing and the door they're absolutely filthy but that is actually quite a good job i'm really quite pleased with myself it's a little bit orange peely as you can probably see there but this car needs a full polish which i'm going to do in a later video and so i think if i just hit this with a bit of polish as well that might that might flatten that out but i am really really pleased with that and so what i did was i just applied loads more coats of uh, the lacquer and i went really heavy just like <laughs> i think i put seven coats of clear on this in the end to get it to to that finish and so i now need to get all of this reassembled properly you can see i've already gone ahead there and i've put this bracket in so this finally came up this was a second hand item because the one that was on there got completely trashed there we go take a look at that that looks absolutely brilliant in there that's perfect and the uh door opens and closes with all the right clearance so the next thing that needs to go in there is this mud guard like that now I've been checking the other side to see exactly how it fits and it doesn't look as though there are going to be any fitment issues that sits like that just kind of just about there down from down from the top now the only thing is that <laughs> because I don't plan any further than I don't know about 30 seconds ahead any given time you can kind of see in well you probably can't see in there but this mud guard needs to actually bolt to this and so there's a hole in the mud guard up there there's another hole there and so what that means is that i'm actually going to have to drill through this cover in two separate places which is slightly annoying because i would have preferred to have drilled it um, and then painted it but you know you live and you learn don't you okay so just get that fitted in place there is that right? Yeah, there. So then I'm gonna get my pick and I'm just gonna score my lovely fresh paint. <laughs> okay, so the middle is about there-ish. I don't wanna do it. Now this, this panel is, it's only plastic, so I'm not very good at this sort of stuff. Oh, this panel cost me 70 pounds and I painted it. Uh, too late now. Oh, okay. Uh, I bet it's wrong. I bet I've done it wrong. Yep, yep. Go on. Okay, okay. That's not too shabby at all. But before I go any further, I can bring that in just slightly more um, when I put the screws in here. But before I do that, I need the wheel arch liner in. Now this is a new to this car uh, wheel arch liner. This is second hand. Here's the old one. You can see that that's all cracked and smashed. And this was about 30 pounds where a brand spanking new one is about 200 pounds. So that's a bargain. <laughs> okay, just completely ignore everything I just said. I just came to fit this <laughs> this replacement wheel arch liner uh, so this is the old one this is the new one and it's just it is completely wrong <laughs> that's different that whole area this bit of the front with those tabs on it is completely like this whole section shouldn't be on there oh so it's not the right one so i have managed to find the absolute definitely correct one there is another one on ebay i've gone ahead and bought that but i don't think it's going to be here for a couple of days so i can't really progress any further here we can move on though for sure and when i say move on what i actually mean is just move slightly backwards once more because i now need to get all of this sticky residue off the heat gun and the scraper worked absolute wonders for getting all the tape off but as you can see look i'm left with all of this residue so all i did was just attacked it with some panel wipe and a microfiber cloth and as you can see here this just worked absolute wonders it just rubbed straight off and the result that it's left behind i'm really quite pleased with okay moving on again you might have seen it in the last video but the illumination the nighttime illumination for the instrument cluster and for all of these lights does not work so right now i have the headlights on and you can see as i turn the headlights on and off 
nothing happens. I have all of the orange, you know, operation lights. They all work just fine. Now, lots of people in the last video said, oh, it's the, I had this all the way down, but I mean, I did actually show in that video that it isn't that because, you know, look, when you move that switch, absolutely nothing happens. You can't probably see it on the camera, but this panel down here is getting slightly brighter and dimmer as I as I rock that switch back and forth. Now I have obviously had this dashboard out, I've had the instrument cluster out, I've had that panel out. So there is obviously a chance that I've missed a cable, uh, but I'm gonna tell you right now, there is absolutely no way I'm taking this dash apart for the hundredth time, that's, that's not gonna happen. So I'm not gonna delve into this like crazy. Now a couple of people in the comments of the last video said it could be a ground issue. I mean, I don't know where to start looking for that, really. I could probably try and find a diagram with all the grounds on it, but everything else in the car works absolutely fine. It's just, it's just that. Someone else commented that they had a problem just like this. I think it might have been on a Golf, and what they did was just bang it, and it worked. Unfortunately, <laughs> doesn't seem to have done anything for me. I should probably get in here. Uh, and have a look at this switch here, because surely if this is responsible for brightening and dimming all of these lights, surely then that means that all the whole entire electrical supply for that is going through this switch. So if that switch has failed, could that be causing the entire issue? Is that how this switch works or does that route through some kind of horrible light module? But before I even do that, I'm just gonna check all of the fuses because if, if it was just a fuse, that would be, well, that'd be jolly, wouldn't it? Okay, so I've checked the fuses. The fuses all seem fine. I've pulled this panel off and you see, this is the kind of thing that we're dealing with. But that just says to me that this goes into some kind of module and I've got no real way of testing you, this whole switch thing. That's that entire, the entire panel. So I don't think I can kind of, well, I don't know how to isolate the rear stat or really test any of it, if I'm honest with you. I've also been up in here now, removed the cover, had a bit of a fiddle around with that box up there. That's all I can do, really, fiddle with it. Nothing, nothing seems to have worked. Okay, so it might not necessarily look like it, but this is actually now a few days later. It's uh, minus two degrees C, and I've had a plethora of parts turn up, which means I can now actually crack back on. And so what I went ahead and did was, I've uh, I bought a whole new one of these. You can see there, there's the, uh, there's the old one still in the panel, because I was wondering if this, you know, maybe this Rio stat dimmer thingamajigger here, you know, is just, just gone kaput. So I, I bought, this is a brand new one, it's a genuine, genuine part. I think it was, this was £30 um, on eBay. I've plugged it in and I can confirm there is absolutely no change <laughs> whatsoever. The illumination on the dials still isn't illuminating. But what I have done, I've made a new discovery, is that I've, I've scanned the car again and in the instrument panel module thingamajigger, uh, in, in my scan tool, I am getting the code B102F auxiliary switch. I don't know if that is the cause of this, but that wasn't there before and it is there now. I've done some Googling and I can't find anything for that code. So what I have done in the meantime is I've posted it, you know, on a, on a trusty Range Rover forum. And I'm just going to see if anyone can get back to me about it. Okay, so moving on back to the wheel arch liner. Uh, this cost me £34.07 for some reason. Um, <laughs> this is now the correct wheel arch liner to go in there. Get in there. Ow. Get in there, piglet. Ah, there you go. Yes. Ah. How, and I do mean how, does that go in there? There's not a chance on this planet that that... Oh yeah, maybe that could go there like that. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, all back together with that new panel in and with the new mudguard there. And I've got to say, I am 
I am very, very happy with that result. That is very satisfying. And that paint has come out really well, actually. <laughs> I've, uh, I've kind of surprised myself a little bit there. You know, considering it was just a rattle can paint job. This is amazing. Right, still more to do though, still more to do. Okay, so it's this driver's window that I'd like to see to next. Now, as you can see there, this was probably as a result of, of the crash, I imagine, but there's a crack. It runs up there, all the way up the top there. Now, the thing with this glass is, you should be able to see it there. This glass is laminated. And that means, obviously, because it's me, this is gonna be more expensive than normal. <laughs> now I have been on eBay, of course, and I've bought a replacement uh, window. And this set me back 125 pounds. Clearly it's, it's second hand, but you can see there, it's, it's basically it's double glazed. It's double glazed, laminated, laminated glass. So that's why it's so expensive. A new one of these, I think is, you know, you're in the region of about 250 pounds for a non-genuine one. So the first thing that I needed to do was just give this window really thorough clean whilst it's out of the car and everything's nice and accessible. And as you can see here, there's some brown parcel tape residue that was left on it. So I just used some acetone with a microfiber cloth and that just came straight off. Next, popped off the door card which gave me access to the two clamps holding onto the window, loosened those off, and then I was able to just whip the glass out of the door. It was really quite simple. <laughs> and then it was just a case of slotting in the new piece of glass. But this was where I realized I had another issue, and I think some of you eagle-eyed viewers may already have noticed the problem before I did. Okay, so I just went to fit the, uh, the new window, and, uh, well, there's the old one. And then, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how I didn't notice it, but this one here is uh, very clearly tinted. I suppose I've now got to try and find a way to remove the tinting. Is this gonna be a hateful job or is it just gonna play ball and come off? Hmm, I wonder. Right, that really wasn't too bad and there is there's minimal residue left over. So that's pretty cool. And we know what to do with residue, don't we, at this point? <laughs> Let's get a little bit of acetone on it, buddy. Then it really was a case of just slotting the glass back in, doing up the clamps, reinstalling the door card, and hey presto, the new window was fitted. And it's nice now to have a window without a crack in it. You can see down here, I missed a little bit of residue from the, um, from the window tint, so I'll remove all of that, you know, in my own time, I suppose. And then it was time for yet another task. If these cars are as unreliable as everyone says they are, then that means I'm gonna be getting in here quite a lot. And if I am gonna be getting in here quite a lot, I can't be having that. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've just bought two replacement gas struts for the bonnet. These should just fit in kind of Okay, and if I remove the window regulator, oh yes. Look at that. And then next up is I would like to replace this rear windscreen wiper. It's quite hard to see in there, but it's just not touching <laughs> in multiple places. I've bought a new one and I think it's just gonna be switch it in, switch it out, shake it all about, and then that'll be done. How? Get off! Ah, yes. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> I cannot be stopped. Oh no. That's not good, is it? Don't do that. Ah! 
This blade is, the blade is fouling on that. Okay, watch and listen. The rear wiper now works as intended and the adjustment that I did was actually fitting the blade correctly. <laughs> oh. Anyone else ever struggle with the easiest of tasks? <laughs> and now I'd like to turn my attention to this. This A-pillar trim cover panel thing has seen better days, clearly. This is where whatever came through the windscreen in the crash, I'm pretty sure it was a branch, has come through and it's obviously just, it's annihilated this whole trim panel. So let's get this sorted. And so as usual, I've bought a replacement uh, trim panel on eBay. This cost me 30 quid. You can see I've also got another one here. And so I actually bought this one thinking it was correct. But if you can see, there's, 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 they're very close those colors, but they're ever so slightly off. This one here is what's called ivory. It's actually the same color. You can see that this glove box is different color to the rest of the interior. This is, this color is called parchment. And when you're looking at photos on eBay in the listings, it's very, very hard to tell uh, which one you're actually looking at. And um, you know, these, these scrap yards, when they sell this stuff, they don't actually list the color. So I've been buying these based on the photo. And so I bought that one, saw clearly that was wrong and then had to go and buy this one. So I can send that back, not a problem. This is 30 pounds. It's a little bit dirty. I'm gonna try and just clean that up quickly. Okay, so all I've got here, it's just a little bit of warm soapy water. And I'm just gonna very gently just brush the dirt out of the material there. Okay, so I've dried this off and there are just a couple of spots. I can see there's one there and it's kind of, there's one there. So all I'm gonna do now is, my missus absolutely swears by this stuff. Um, so just a couple of little sprays of that, wipe it on with a cloth and then hopefully, hopefully that will come out nicely just brushing it with the soap there is removed the majority of that dirt okay so i rinsed that stuff off dried it that is looking marvelous absolutely delightful and then if i just pull this one out of there like a so stick you in there cover up that bit of broken trim that I'll never fix. <laughs> Ta-da! How much better does that look? There's a little bit of the headliner that was damaged right up in that corner, but that's, I mean, to fix that is the, the whole headliner, basically. So I can live with that. Right, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. And the next thing that I now want to move on to, and this is a fix that I think so many cars could benefit from, and it's, it's so easy, and I think it makes such a massive difference, is just changing out the number plates for new ones. Now, the first thing with these ones in particular, that's just inaccurate now, so it makes no sense to keep it. But also, these, these number plates, you know, you see where the screws have gone through, it's all just started rusting in there. You get all this dirt, and it always makes a car look tatty. Now, you probably noticed that I've already pulled the rear plate off and so the rear plate looks like that you can see where it's just it's just gone all gammy that's no good look it's, it's cracked all around there all around all around this hole they're no good and again inaccurate so i've gone ahead and had some new ones made up i haven't got the country thing on it they're just they're just plain plates which is just how i like them and if we come around the back here what i've done is i've just filled these old screw holes in just with a little bit of uh, resin you know the the gorilla glue type resin um, just so that no water can get in there and go down into the boot because how i always like to affix my plates is that i actually like to use number plate tape so you don't have any screws in there and i think without the screws it's just a much cleaner look now obviously if you're looking at that and you're thinking that the color is off that's because i still have the protective film over there so i'll peel that off in a minute so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to clean all this area down so that i've got a nice area to stick to and then i've got some of this 3m vhb which i believe stands for very high bond and this stuff is incredibly strong uh, it's, it's more than you're ever going to need for a number plate so let's get this sorted
lovely so there you have a little bit of a before and after on the front and a before and after on the rear it's just the little bits they always make such a difference just the tiny little bits of detail yeah dead happy with that dead happy with that Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just check on my forum post from earlier and see if anyone has any idea what might be going on with the illumination on the dials and all of this and on there. Okay, and I posted on landyzone.co.uk. Uh, so look, dimmer switch, is it working? Is there voltage to it? From here? Okay, so someone called uh, Graculus has said the background illumination all appears to be through Fuse 51. Now, I already know I haven't checked Fuse 51. I checked, um, which fuses did I check? I checked the fuses basically that correspond to the instrument cluster. I haven't checked all of the fuses in there because there's quite a few. Gonna be worth checking Fuse 51 quickly. Okay, so it should just be this five amp fuse here. If it turns out to, <laughs> just be a fuse i'm going to be equal parts annoyed and happy because it's just a fuse uh, <laughs> can you see that that five amp fuse has blown there's no spares in here so if i just borrow uh, that one for the parking brake you go in there oh it's gone get in if this works i'm going to be very very happy okay come on okay what are you saying yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> can you see that hold on uh, is it coming out on camera yes oh that's so good now i can just drive this car and actually see <laughs> how fast i'm going how much diesel i have what an absolute result thank you to graculus on landy zone and whilst i have you are you enjoying these videos i am on a mission to go full time on youtube but if you want way more out of me just hit subscribe and i'm telling you that is the best way you can help me achieve that Thank you ever so much. But any enthusiasm or chippiness that I had at this point was about to fade away because it was time to wash the car. I don't wanna. And regular viewers of the channel will know quite how much I hate washing cars. So I forced some headphones in my ears, put on some upbeat drum and bass, danced around my driveway like a buffoon. <laughs> nearly did my back in and then cracked on. Well, at least it's really warm out as well to boot. <laughs> so I do this every time I wash a car. I go into it absolutely hating it. And then it's all lovely and clean. And then I really, really enjoy the result. It was only a, a very basic, quick clean. Uh, and I'm really glad that I did because it was the first time that I've seen this bonnet actually all clean because this got replaced in the last video, if you remember, and this came out of a scrapyard. So now I've actually cleaned it, you know, you can see just a little bit more where it needs a little bit of attention. There's a scratch there. There was one around here somewhere. Yeah, there's one there that I didn't see before until I've just cleaned it now. So it looks like a quite nasty stone chip. You know, a little bit more up there. 
and then on this new wing that I bought you can also see actually there's just a little bit there on that corner but I think I might be able to touch touch all that up now the car does obviously need a really good polish I'm not going to do that right now but just look it looks really really good I'm so pleased with the result I did manage to get that off in the end using my new favorite tool acetone and now it's also uncovered a little bit of you know that's going to be corrosion under there these are these boot lids are famous for corroding you can see it's starting to just come through there but nothing too bad i've seen a lot lot worse look how smart that is i'm sorry but that is <laughs> a very very smart car i also got all the extra gubbins off of the window there i really like these range rovers <laughs> i really like them and now obviously of course here's my favorite bit Oh, <laughs> and I think I'm going to run this as my new daily. I can't wait to get this out on the road. If you want to see any kind of behind the scenes of what I do, go and follow me on Instagram. Here's my handle at not economically viable. There's a link in the description below as well. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe. We want to go full time, get more videos for you. But until then, I will see you in the next one. <laughs>